America's Heartland is made possible by Crop Life America, representing the companies whose modern farming innovations help America's farmers provide nutritious food for communities around the globe. The Fund for Agriculture Education, a fund created by KVIE to support America's Heartland programming. Contributors include the following. There's meat, and then there's bacon. If I told you Americans eat five billion pounds of bacon each year, what would you say? Only five billion? There's no time bacon's you, you not good to eat. You can salt it, you can make it sweet. You can literally put it on yeah. anything and make it delicious. It's its own condiment, but it's a meat. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's perfect. It's one of the oldest cuts of meat. It's been around since the 1500s, and it's as popular as ever. Here's another round right here. Oh, wow. Look at this. That looks amazing. Now this is an assignment. From beer and bacon pairings in Chicago, there's bacon quesadillas, bacon cupcakes, bacon cookies, bacon ice cream. To an annual festival dedicated to all things bacon in Colorado. I'm gonna find out exactly why we love bacon so much. This is my second one today. If you don't like bacon, you're an alien, period. Bacon! Today we're serving up bacon-wrapped America's Heartland. Oh yeah. Admit it, your mouth is watering right now. You can't smell it, but you know the aroma already. It battles coffee for the best scent to get you out of bed. Hello, bacon! Breakfast is over. It's the middle of the day, and yet, here we are. The crisp mountain air of River Run Village at Keystone Resort in Colorado is filled with that distinct aroma of cured and fried pork. Yes, I know you love your BLT. Who doesn't? But BLT, I mean, how creative is that? We're talking about bacon donuts, bacon ice cream, bacon sandwiches, bacon samples. Every year, thousands of folks come right here to Keystone Resort in Colorado to sample everything pork not on the fork. It's known as the Blue Ribbon Bacon Tour, and this guy gets most of the credit for the idea. I guess my official title for the Blue Ribbon Bacon Tour and Festival is... Uh, founder? Founder, Chairman of the Iowa Bacon Board. My friends like to call me the face of bacon, I guess. <laughs> the face only a mother could love. Ever heard of the Iowa Bacon Board? Well, it's basically a creation of Brooks and his bacon-loving buddies who are responsible for this event. Hey, why not? We started celebrating it in 2001 in Spirit Lake, Iowa at the Porter Family Cabin, and we just kind of had a retreat. It was a weekend getaway of about, you know, 15 or 20 guys. And we just, we all love bacon. We'd have bacon with every single meal. One of the guys really liked bacon with just mayonnaise, which was kind of weird. Um, and we used to sit around a campfire and profess our love for bacon. So each guy would get up and, you know, say a little thing, you know, hey, I love bacon, bacon loves me, I'm gonna eat it till I'm 103. And, and after that, we would each toast or cheers with a great O oh, bacon. I'm not sure the mayonnaise is the weird part of that story, but those late night bacon worship sessions grew into a bacon festival in Iowa that attracts tens of thousands. And like bacon grease flowing around a skillet, the tour continues to grow. Colorado, Wisconsin, even Iceland. Now in its fourth year at Keystone, thousands of people will pay anywhere from 20 to 50 bucks for unlimited bacon strip samples and bacon dishes. Enjoy. Thank you. Oh. When you look around how many people are here, they're here for bacon. Absolutely freaking amazing. It's grits with bacon, jalapenos, and cheese. That sounds delicious. Pretty amazing. The sliders were really good. The sushi was strange, but it was good. <laughs>
<laughs> Have you ever met anybody who doesn't like bacon? Vegetarians. Vegetarians. But I think they really do like bacon. They're just in denial. Bacon, bacon caramel swirl ice cream. cream. Mm -hmm. This is like the best looking thing I've seen today. Like yeah. triple bacon? Triple bacon, tater tots. Barbecue cheesy something yumminess? <laughs> you need a defibrillator. <laughs> That's what you really need. You yeah. know? I mean... It's that good. It's They're that really, good. really good. Brooks, it smells good. What do we got here? Uh, we got the Colorado, uh, Colorado Mountain College Culinary Institute doing a wild game bacon slider. It's uh, buffalo and elk and sauteed onions and some bacon. Oh man, that looks good. We gotta try one. Yeah, hey, sure. So we got elk, buffalo, and onions. Onions and bacon. <laughs> and of course it's got bacon in yes, it. Yes, they actually won best savory dish at the 2013 Blue Ribbon Bacon Tour. Oh, let's dig into one of those. Yeah. There you go, guys. Thank you. Oh man, look at that. That's just tasty Hot right off there. The grill. Oh, yeah. Well, I suppose you eat the bacon first, right? That's oh, kind of yeah, the rule. Oh yeah, look at that. That's Mm. This is my second one today. Well, I'll be back for another. Oh, man. It's hard when you eat for a living. I gotta eat all this good food all the time. Keep your girlish figure. I know. That's good. I mean, just all the flavors work together with the onions. Mm. But this is what it's all about. It is. I mean, if somebody can bite into this and enjoy it, you're a happy guy. I, I know. It's bringing me, you know, a lot of great pleasure eating this. <laughs> How many do you think you're gonna make today? Uh, we're gonna sell about 1,100 today. 1,100 sliders today. 1,100 of these. And how many of those did you eat? Two. <laughs> Maybe three. <laughs> awesome. In the winter, this resort attracts skiers to take on the slopes. But after the snow is melted, the Keystone Resort turns into a place for summer festivals. And this one is a gluttonous gathering that includes live music, adult beverages, and quite simply, lots and lots of bacon. The combination of the sweet, the savory, the music, the beer, the thin air, well, it's all intoxicating and it makes you do things you wouldn't normally do and getting serious answers about bacon like a good idea at the top. wasn't happening here If any place would know why bacon is becoming so popular, it's Chicago. Poet Carl Sandburg called Chicago hog butcher for the world. For decades after the Civil War, Chicago's Union stockyards processed more meat than anywhere in the world. Livestock came in from the West by the railroad car full. 40,000 people were employed to move and butcher livestock, and hogs were at the top of the list. During the Civil War, 1.4 million hogs were butchered. Look at the sign in this photo, the capacity to butcher 1,000 hogs an hour in 1906. There was so much livestock that needed food and water. At one point, half a million gallons of water was being pumped from the Chicago River every day. Refrigerated rail cars, the growing trucking industry, and a changing meat industry led to the demise of the stockyards. They were shut down in the 1950s. But the stockyards left a lasting legacy, and Chicago will forever be known for its meat. And this place knows bacon. Since 2007, Petty Long's Beer and Bacon Pub in Lincoln Park has been wallowing in the popularity and goodness that is everything bacon. Uh, pepper bacon. Pepper bacon. And get there early to grab a table for their Sunday bacon brunch. The 
three-man kitchen crew works magic with meat in what has to be the smallest restaurant kitchen in Chicago. They tried expanding, neighbors resisted, so they dance around cooler doors and griddles and somehow manage to create bacon-centered dishes. One dish for true meat lovers, something called the bomb. They start with five pounds of ground sausage, pork and beef, and then wrap it in a weave of brown sugar bacon. It's enough to feed eight people. But the truly daring can try to win a t-shirt by eating their own bomb with a side of fries. In 45 minutes, only a handful of people have actually done it. Kevin Bacon is not one of them. But Patty Long's owner, Chris Latchford, says Sundays at Patty Long's are known for something else. We were doing different uh, beer uh, tastings here at Patty Long's. And uh, we just decided one day, you know what? Bacon goes really good with beer. Why don't we just throw a slice of bacon out there with each beer we do? 100 people showed up. We knew we were onto something. Now, Chris must use an online reservation system to keep up with the demand for the $36 Patty Long's Beer and Bacon Tastings. Squeezed into the back of the dining room on communal tables, the raucous tasters get their fill. One by one, the tasting flights come out. A beer carefully selected to pair with a specific cut of bacon. How are we doing? Ready for round two? Oh, yeah. All right, good. So guys, this is one of the bacons we do here at Patty Long's. This is our cracked pepper bacon. And the tasters quickly find out what we consider bacon is just one slice of the worldwide bacon scene. The tasting is also an education on different cuts of bacon. Here's another round right here. Oh, wow. Look at this. That looks amazing. Now this, if I'm not mistaken, this is the jowl bacon. Yeah, what they call the face bacon. <laughs> it's from the face. Huh? It is. How's it go with the bacon? Good combo? Oh, very good combo. Very good combo. It's probably one of the best pairings. I think the IPAs actually are better with some of most of the bacon so far. Because of the like the really like hoppiness of the beer versus like the sweet and saltiness of the bacon. It pairs really well. So which do you prefer? Like beer and bacon tasting or wine tasting? I'm not a huge wine fan, so of course beer and bacon. Hey, beer and bacon wins. Beer and bacon wins. <laughs> Sorry, Napa Valley. <laughs> Chicago has got you beat. Yeah. It's pretty amazing to see how, after a couple of beers and bacons, people start talking to each other about how they haven't tried this before. Or they've been to this particular brewery. It's just, uh, you know, opening up people's minds to the different uh, delights of cured pork meats. <laughs> You know, you, you look at the Italians and they got pancetta, or you look at the Irish and they've got a different cut of the pig for their bacon. There's different ways to, to create different bacons and all of them are interesting. I find most of them to be very tasty and I find most of them to be even tastier when I pair them up with a beer, so it works. <laughs> Did you have any idea it would take off the way it has? We had no idea at the time. Obviously we do now and uh, it's been a great success for us. Long may it continue, but as long as we continue to provide different bacons and combinations with beers that people potentially have not tried before. I think the interest is always going to be there, even for people who've perhaps done the tasting before, but then they come back a few months later and try a whole new different selection. With my newfound knowledge and appreciation of bacon, there was more exploring to do. It was time to leave Chicago, hog butcher to the world and visit Hog Farmer to the World, Iowa. There are three million people in Iowa. There are more than 20 million hogs. Jake Peterson farms near Baldwin, Iowa. Dad farms, uh, grandpa farmed, uh, great grandpa farmed before that. So yeah, was, we've been doing it for quite a while. And, and you went off to school and got a degree? Yep, got a four-year degree from Iowa State. Animal science? Animal science, yep. Jake's farm is a bit of a throwback to earlier Iowa farming. Besides growing corn and soybeans and raising hogs, Jake has sheep and cows. His kids have some chickens. 
Most hog farmers today are using large buildings called confinements, where thousands of hogs are raised. I'm kind of the minority, I guess you could say, of the hog operations. Uh, most of them are confinement, uh, nothing wrong with that. It's just I choose to raise them outdoors. What's the advantage, you think? One of the main advantages for me is I have extremely low overhead. I don't have the building infrastructure. I mean, I have some hot wire and some plywood huts. The downside of that is I have a lot more labor per pig than they do. How about the taste? Does it impact the taste at all to I, have them I, out on grass? I think it does. Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, clean, fresh air. Uh, they have access to grass. The finished hogs are in bedding. More of a natural environment. When I think about a kind of an old school, traditional Iowa farm, your, uh, your farm said sure feels like one, Jake. Yeah, it, uh, it, yeah, it does. Here, grab this one. Sure. And uh, we'll just walk in here and give them a little feed. Just kind of push them back so they don't rub on you. Come on, girls. Shh. These hogs are purebred Berkshire hogs. To understand why the breed of hog has anything to do with the taste of bacon, you'll need to rewind to the 1950s. Frank Farmer seems happy as he pockets his check and heads back home. He has reason to be happy. He sold what the market is looking for, meat type hogs. The hog industry's push was the meat type hog. Take a good look at them as they come off the truck. They're not over fat, but are long and meaty with a well-rounded turn over the loin. Farmers were encouraged to raise hog breeds that were less fatty and more lean. Why? One word, chicken. Here's another familiar everyday scene. The American housewife shopping. She's the person everyone in the meat industry, producer, packer, retailer, is trying to please. Let's follow this determined young lady past the meat counter, where there are all kinds of meat each competing for her attention. What does she buy? Not the ham slice with all the fat that will fry away in drippings. She doesn't want these pork chops, not enough lean meat. And she is passing up the pork roast with too much fat. But here's something she likes, and the pork industry has lost another sale. For decades, the industry marketed pork as a lean alternative to chicken. Remember the other white meat? And the Berkshire breed didn't fit the lean label as well as other breeds. Fortunately for bacon lovers, a new pork push is underway. And that includes more fatty breeds like the Berkshire. It has a nice red color where a lot of the meat's pale. And it has a nice pH and uh, cooks nice. And it's kind of making a comeback. Berkshire Bacon was center stage at the Blue Ribbon Bacon Tour in Colorado. Iowa farmers Doug and Priscilla England were handing out samples of their Berkshire Bacon. <laughs> We've never been to a, a bacon fest before and this was, there was a lot more people here than I ever expected and I just couldn't believe the amount of people that really liked our bacon they came up with, with really nice things to say to us about the bacon. There had to be over 300 pounds of bacon we served right here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yes. we, there were pan after pan after pan of it. Yeah. We just couldn't keep up. Along with Jake Peterson, the Englands are members of a co-op of farmers called Berkwood Farms. Instead of selling their hogs on the market, they market and sell them directly through the co-op. All of the farmers raise that heirloom Berkshire breed of hog. We've tried to make it so the farmers, the small independent guys, can thrive in this pork business today and raise a quality product and get paid for it. The meat type hog is the answer to better pork in the meat markets and more satisfied Frank farmers at the livestock markets. If the bacon craze is good for the farmer, it's definitely good for James Wheeler. Six days a week, he and his crew hit the streets of Sacramento, California in his pink pig colored food truck, Bacon Mania. We're pretty much a full-blown restaurant on wheels everywhere we go. So it gives people the option to have, you know, really good home truck made food that we bring to them. We put bacon in everything. We put bacon in our full, slow roasted pulled pork. We put it in our hamburger patties, our mac and cheese, our chili, everything that we have, we incorporate bacon in it somehow. 
Today, James is on his way to a suburban office park for the lunch rush. And he's running a little late. The other trucks are already in place, but James doesn't seem too concerned. As soon as we pull up and we make the stop at our spot, we get everything fired back up from the drive. We kick on our exhaust fans and just the aroma of bacon, just we just fill the whole air and you know a good 20, 30 feet around us is just just has the bacon floating around in the air and just that sizzle and that crackle that the people love about bacon and something about that smell just kicks them into I gotta have it mode and then they hopefully A-line it straight to our straight to our truck and get to try out some of our goodies. Did your boss have bacon cheeseburger? And your side order a chili cheese fries. Have a great day, man. It's like a taste bud trump card. The power of bacon takes on other food trucks. Although James insists it's a friendly competition, he most certainly wields an unfair advantage. Take the Jack Back Sammy grilled cheese sandwich. Oh my gosh, let's Mac slice this thing off. Sammy. Look yeah. at that. Melty cheese on the inside and grilled cheese on the outside. Mac and bacon stuffed inside. It looks good to me. <laughs> Hog heaven. Yeah. And people can eat the whole thing? Yeah, some people do. It's kind of a little challenge sometimes. People try to get through these in a lunch and uh, not go home, not go back to the office and go to sleep. Uh, how much cheese do you end up putting in this uh, thing? About four cups is the total cheese we go from the inside and out. So four cups of more cheese. Go, more cheese goes on the outside than goes on the inside of these sandwiches. And how much bacon? Uh, a handful of bacon, about a half cup to three quarters of a cup just on the inside alone. And then there's bacon as well inside of the mac and cheese that goes on there. So this one has a little double dose of bacon on it, which is always a good thing. The Bacon Mania crew will cook up about 30 pounds of bacon today. Fridays are always a good day for us. I think it's just that sizzle and that taste of the bacon, that real crunchy, just as soon as it hits your mouth, it's just, it's just amazing. If it feels like you're seeing bacon everywhere, you're right. Bacon sales have been on the rise over the past several years. Restaurants are adding bacon to their menus, and people are frying up more bacon at home. In short, bacon is hip. There's turkey bacon or tofu bacon for vegetarians, and it's not just for cooking anymore. Check out this bacon merchandise. There's even the Bacon Man video game where you help Bacon Man restore his rightful place on the meat throne. Scientists have even tracked down why bacon smells so good. The American Chemical Society says 150 volatile organic compounds work together to create a delicious combination. You know they call bacon the meat candy? Amber Vanderwerker doesn't need any science. Her family brings bacon wrap goodness to the California State Fair every year. Their booth is one of the most popular. My husband and I own this. Um, it's a summer business, so we run seasonally and hire a lot of locals to work for us. And we bring my dad with us and my mom is the nanny and my brother-in-law came to help set up and... And your dad is on the grill. Yep. Put him on the grill, we all take the summer off and come sell bacon. We got started here with more convenience items. We started off with churros and nachos and things like that. Um, and in 2008, when the economy kind of tanked, we started to get creative. So we started off with the chocolate-covered bacon, which turned out to be a huge hit. And then we started playing at home and we came up with the beer-battered bacon that we do. It's beer battered in deep fried thick cut pieces of bacon and a bacon wrapped chicken on a stick. And now we've come up with, we do a um, bacon wrapped turkey leg and we have um, kebabs that are wrapped in bacon, all sorts of good stuff. Whether it's served up at the fair, complemented with cold beer, covered in cheese, or celebrated by meat lovers, there's no denying bacon has found a place in Americans' hearts. That is so good. Nothing in bacon processing is more eye-appealing or mouth-watering than a view of bacon as it emerges from the stainless steel smoke chambers. A beautiful sight, isn't it? Okay, so we've learned there's a lot of reasons why bacon tastes so good, and some of them are scientific. But one thing we do know is bacon aficionados, farmers, and chefs pretty much all agree. They just fill it in their gut. Uh, that's going to do it for this edition of America's Heartland. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Hey, before we go, just a reminder, you can connect to America's Heartland through your favorite social media sites, and you'll find video from all of our shows at americasheartland.org.
You can purchase a DVD or Blu-ray copy of this program. Here's the cost. To order, just visit us online or call 888-814-3923. You can see it in the eyes of every woman and man In America's heart, living close to the land There's a love for the country and a pride in the brand In America's heart, living close, close to the land America's Heartland is made possible by Crop Life America, representing the companies whose modern farming innovations help America's farmers provide nutritious food for communities around the globe. The Fund for Agriculture Education, a fund created by KVIE to support America's Heartland programming. Contributors include the following. 